In this segment, we're going to look at a, another demo of the problem we just saw, and we'll look at a common workaround, and we'll look at the pros and cons of that before moving on to a better solution. So, to recreate that problem in a, in a way that's easy to see, we can add another method into our contact object, and we'll call this one print later. So we have print name, which prints right now, and we want to create a function print later, which is going to wait a second or two, and then do the printing. So we'll create a function, and we'll use the built-in global set timeout. And set timeout is going to take a function, and it's going to take a timeout, how long we want the browser to wait before it fires off the event that runs our function. So we punch in the function we want, which is contact.printName. And we'll put in a delay of maybe 1,500 milliseconds. And we'll come over to Firefox. And we'll see our contact.printName works. And if we run contact.print later, that one fails. And it fails the exact same way we saw before. So what are some fixes for this? Well, a very common one that you may be tempted to write or you may see in other people's code looks like this. Before we actually use the function, we grab the current value of this and store it in a different variable, typically called that. So we have var that equals this. Now that we've captured the this value that we want, we can use it by writing a new function inside of here. And the new function we'll call that.printName. And let's just check that this works. So now it prints out Joe. And so we've got our functionality back, but this isn't really an optimal solution. There are a couple of problems here. Uh, first, we have this var that equals this. It doesn't just sound silly. Uh, it is a little bit silly. Um, it's been used so widely in JavaScript that it's actually a pretty known and accepted idiom at this point. And if you're just doing a simple callback like we have here, it's not the end of the world. But specific problems include if we've got more than one callback, which is not uncommon at all in JavaScript, and we want to capture all of the relevant this contexts, because of the scope rules, we would need a different variable for each one. So instead of saying var that equals this and being done with it, we'd have to say var that equals this for the first callback. And for the next one, we'd have to say var the first that equals that, var that equals this. And for the third callback, we'd have to say var the original that equals the first that, and then var the next that equals, and so on. It, it gets a little bit crazy. It'd be really hard to read and pretty hard to express what your code's actually doing. The other problem we have is that we're uh, losing the opportunity for code reuse. Right? We already have a perfectly useful function here, contact.printName, that does everything we want. But instead of using that, we've written another function in line down here at line 20 through 22. Now in this case, the new function isn't that different from the original one, but it obscures what's going on because we have to use that that symbol, which is really a workaround. We're leveraging a JavaScript scope rule and the closure rule in order to get around the problem with this. In the next section, we're going to look at an easier and better solution to the same problem. I'm going to add on to the example we've been working on. I'll leave print later the way it is, and I'll add another version called print later better. So print later better is going to be a function. And we'll come back to our set timeout, and we're going to look at something we can do here. So set timeout is going to take a function, and it's going to take a timeout. So I'll put the 1,500 milliseconds in here. Now the feature we want to use here is a method on function instances called bind. The, the bind feature was originally implemented in third party libraries uh, to solve this and some related problems. And it turns out to be really popular and really handy. It made its way into the ECMAScript spec in version 5 in 2009. So any ECMAScript 5 compliant browser will support this bind feature on any function instance. Even better, it's possible to polyfill this bind feature into old browsers. So what we're going to see here can actually be used in browsers that predate ECMAScript 5, if you need to do that. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to find the function we want, which is this dot print name. And we're going to call bind on the print name function itself. And what bind does is it takes optionally a this parameter and optionally other parameters, and it returns a new version of the function that binds or retains the this value that you provided, if you provided one, and the other arguments. For this video, what we're interested in doing is preserving a this value. So we're just going to put the current value of this, the one we want, into, as a parameter into bind. So this.printName.bind, and we pass this. It looks a little bit strange, but it's actually what we want. And we can test this out. And after a second and a half, it prints out Joe. So now we have the functionality we want. We're not using any scope or closure workarounds. We don't have any var that. And we're able to reuse exactly the function that we already defined that we knew we wanted to use. So we're, we're able to uh, have code reuse instead of altering and copying the code. So it looks a little bit unusual, but it's actually a very common pattern that when we create a function, um, perhaps inline as an event handler, we might call dot bind this at the end of defining that function. Because we want to create a version of the function that retains a specific known value of this and be able to pass it to some other piece of code to use so that the other code can invoke the function without knowing anything about the dots or the context or anything else and get the right result. In the next section, we'll take a look at an ECMAScript 6 feature that makes this even easier than it is right here.